Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, I'm the lead pastor here, but I do that with my beautiful wife, Carrie. She's the brains behind this operation. <laughs> I'm just a pretty face. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. We like to have fun here. You're going to find that out. One of our, in our staff, uh, one of our main goals is fun. That's, that's one of our goals in our staff uh, values that we have here is that we have fun. Last week we talked about being positive, being optimistic, that the bad news is bad, but God has given us good news to share, and that good news is about Jesus, and we need to inundate the world that's spreading bad news with all of the good news. It was amazing that we had, I think, about 10 people that got saved this week. 10 people got saved this week. Got so exciting. So exciting. God is positive and he's optimistic about you. He's intentional. His plans are intentional. He's got an amazing plan, well thought out, not just happenstance, a well thought out plan for your life if you will follow it. So you can also get any of our message if you go to livingfaithfellowship.com or go to our app. You can always get uh, pick up any of the messages that we've, have, we've done around here or also you can join us uh, live online as we're going through the message. So, this week I'm going to start a series. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to we're going to start on a journey this week, and it really is going to be a journey. It's going to be a journey for you. It's going to be a journey for me as we as we move forward on this. I'm I'm going to start a series on the presence of God, the presence of God. We're going to go through the Bible and see what He has to say about the presence of God. What happens when God shows up? And we're going to discover the presence of God, what it can do, and what it can do for you. What, what is the presence of God? How does it relate now? How do, we, how do we engender it? And how do we move forward with that, that, that powerful aspect of the living God and his presence? You see, I believe that God is moving. He's moving right now. He's moving, especially in, in, in colleges uh, around the nation. Uh, at the end of last year, Asbury College had a, a prayer meeting that went 24-7 for over two weeks. It never stopped. The, the, the Lord visited that place, and all of a sudden things happened. People were getting saved. The whole town was coming. People were coming from all over the world just to see what God was doing. And he was doing amazing things, and he was changing lives. And it was about integrity. It was about honesty. It was about getting rid of sin and changing our lives and following after God. It's powerful. God is moving. And what I don't want to do is miss out on the move of God. God is moving. I want to cultivate his presence. I want to say, hey, 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 show up here. Come here. I want people when they walk through that door to go, wow, I feel something when I come through the door. I feel something. I, I feel his presence. I, I feel something happening. I, 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 can, I can sense it. And that's what we want to do. God is moving in a powerful way. The presence of God is a, is a wonderful thing, but it's also a fearful thing. It's, it's him who knows and is everything. And yet, he's willing to look upon us, to touch us, to change us, to challenge us. What a God. He's so, so good. He's so so good. He's so good. If, you, if you've been thinking that God out there, man, I don't know about God. He is so good and he loves you so much regardless of what you have done. He loves you and he will keep loving you. So let's stand. I'm going to talk about a scripture that we'll get to probably at the end of the message. It's found in Psalm 1611. Let's say it together. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. You may be seated. Hopefully I'll get to that. But I, I want to, as we, as we embark on this journey and this discovery, I, I, I want to talk about some things. I want to get some, some aspects out in front of us as we, as we start looking at this. And remember, God's not linear. He's, he's like all over the place. He is the, the number one multitasker. He's everywhere. So we're, we're going to kind of, this is all going to go kind of like this. And hopefully when you get done, you're going to go, wow, that was great. Hopefully. <laughs> but it's going to take us a couple of weeks to do this. So let me kind of 
throw some things out just for our understanding. General comments about the presence of God. The Trinity. The Trinity, the three in one. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, God the Holy Spirit. There's three. They're separate, but they're one. Separate, but one. Separate, but one. How does that happen? I don't know. Already God blows our mind, all right? This whole thing about God will blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind when you try to understand his presence. You're going to understand God. It will blow your mind. Remember, God is not restricted to your limited understanding. He's not limited to your understanding. Go, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do anything because you don't see anything. No, no, he can do. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, why ever he wants, and whatever thing you want to do what he wants. And he doesn't need your permission, and he doesn't need your understanding. He'd like to give it to you. He'd like to help you in on what he's doing. You see, God is moving today. He's doing things. His presence is touching down. And he's saying, I'd love to let you in on what's going on, but, but whether you understand or not doesn't affect me and what I'm going to do, God says. But I would really, really, I want to be in on what God is doing. I want to hear his voice. I want to know what he's doing. I want to be a part and a participant of the move of God that he wants to do in the earth today. Some say it's getting darker and darker and darker, but I believe the truth is getting lighter and lighter and lighter. God is making a division. I want to be in on what he's doing. He's confusing. He's confounding. He's bigger than you can comprehend. You can't totally define him. We have a lot in here. This is volume one of about 20 billion volumes about God. This is what he's revealed. He is so much bigger than this. You can't totally define him. Therefore, you can't totally comprehend him. Not totally. If you could, he would become insignificant to you. As soon as you could go, God, and you could draw a circle around him, and put him in the box and define him. Now you can do this with him. Okay, put him there. Yeah, I got him. I got him. This is who God is. And that's what a lot of people do. This is what I think God is. And so we put him in the box and we put him there. And so we do our life. And then when we need him, we pull him out of the box. And we go back to the box. And put him back in the box and do our stuff and pull him out of the box. I mean, he doesn't live in a box. He's not jack in the box. He doesn't just come out when we start cranking his handle. He doesn't live in a box. You can't place him in a box. You can't put anything on him. If you could, he would become insignificant. You see, God is so far above and so amazing. You will never be able to... As soon as you think you figured God out, he'll do something different. He'll do it differently. But God, you always... I know but I'm doing something bigger. I'm doing something better. I'm doing something more wonderful. You, you have to understand that God is so amazing. And it's so amazing that he decided he wanted relationship with us, sinful man. Why would he want that? Because he loves us so much. I, I'm just awed at how big God is, how small I am. You are smaller than you think. No, 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 no. You're way smaller than that compared to God. There's God and there's you. Where is he? I don't know. He's so small I can't see him. I'm saying, do you understand that about God? He's so big and he's so wonderful to include us in a destiny, in a quest, in an adventure with him. Oh my gosh. Most people go, oh, I don't know if I want God in my life. And I'm going, he's so awesome. He's so wonderful. You can't figure him out. We have limited understanding. And therefore, that's why he says, so you're going to have to exercise faith. You're going to have to exercise trust. And those things, faith and trust, 
as we exercise it and the unlimitedness of God becomes absolutely outstanding. The second thing. In the Old Testament, God shows up sporadically. He shows up here and there. Now, remember, who's showing up again? we got to figure out. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I think all three of them show up in the Old Testament. And you say, well, how did Jesus show up? I think the pre-incarnate Jesus shows up in some things. But, but we see God showing up. Mainly, he shows up via the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. But, but all of these factors... But you have to realize it was sporadic. It never stayed. It came and it went. It came and it went. God would come, do something, and then he was gone. Come and do something, and he's gone. Come and do something, and he's gone. Different in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is continuous. It's continuous. It's given by Jesus after his death, and, and that presence is an abiding presence. It abides with you. The presence of the living God is in you via the Holy Spirit. It's in you. God is in you. It's crazy to think that, that he would want to live in here. Man, I'm such a sinner. I'm so unworthy. Yet, he chooses to live here in you, in me. It's continuous. Hebrews 13.5 says, for he himself has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You may think you're leaving God, but he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You can go through all of your sin. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's on you. You see, number four, the Holy Spirit is our advantage. Our advantage. Nonetheless, I tell you the truth in John 16. It's to your advantage. And that word advantage means you're better off. You're better off. You're better off. Jesus was telling the, his disciples this as he was getting ready to leave, as he was ready, ready to go to the cross and he was going to be gone. You're better off that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the paraclete, where paraclete means called to the side. He's, he's, he's the helper, the counselor, the comforter, the advocate, the teacher that guides us to truth. He empowers us. He convicts us. He will be with us. He's going to give that to you, the Holy Spirit. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit comes to you. He comes to you. He'll help guide your life. God living in you. The Holy Spirit is a game changer for a Christian. Oh, man. Remember, he's in there, so he starts speaking. He starts talking. He starts leading. He starts guiding you. He starts giving direction. He starts giving you insight. He's a God who knows everything, and so therefore he can tell you things. It's amazing. God lives in us. How cool. Number five. Let me give you some of the characteristics of God. He's number one, omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. Number two, he's omniscient. It means he's all-knowing. He knows everything. Number three, he's omnipresent. It means he's everywhere present. He's everywhere present. And he's also present in the past, present, and future all at the same time as well. How can he be present in the future? Well, he wrote about it right here. He told us everything was going to happen. He's been there. He's seen it. Revelation. He... He showed us. He told us what was going to happen. We win, by the way. We win. I read the end. I read the ending. We win. Ta-da. That's exciting. We win. But he's past, present, future, all at the same time. He's not bound by time like you are. There's a lot of people that aren't bound by time, and they, they show up whenever. Just kidding, just kidding. I don't need emails. Because I'm probably one of them. <laughs> the Bible emphasizes God's manifested presence, not only his omnipresence. Let me explain this. The word manifest, his manifested presence. The word manifest means readily perceived by the senses. Manifest, his presence manifested. You can 
You can sense it. You can feel it. You can almost smell it. You sense, you know something's here. You know God's here. You feel him. Sense him. You know that he's there. You see, there's a difference between saying God is everywhere, he's omnipresent, because he is, and saying God is here. God, God is here. I sense him. I feel him. I, I know God's speaking to me. He's in this place. I sense him. D does that make sense? He is everywhere. He's everywhere. He's already there. But when you sense, feel, God's here. That's the manifested presence of God. Feel him. Sense him. Enjoy him. Just, you know, the Bible talks about glory. And we'll talk about that in, in, in another time. But the word glory talks about weight. Talks about, you can, like, I feel something. I feel something. What's the physical manifestation? Now, we're talking about the, 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 the uh, 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 perceived by our senses manifestation of his presence. But the physical manifestation is called a theophany. Everybody say, theophany. theophany. That's when God literally shows up. And you're going, boy, I can see him. I've never had one of those. But there are in the Bible. And I'm saying, he manifests himself. You can see him. You can see him. I'm probably mainly going to be talking, and I would love for God to show up here. <laughs> it would be really cool uh, for, and, and manifest his, his, his theophany. But most of the time we're probably going to talk about is that I sense him. I know he's here. There's a presence here. And you see, when God's presence is there and you feel it and you sense it, it changes everything. I think we sang about it. It changes. Things start changing when God shows up. You sense him. He starts speaking. He starts directing. He starts empowering. Number six, there's a difference between the presence of God and spiritism. There's a difference between the presence of God and spiritism. Spiritism is a worldly doctrine that spirits of the dead can communicate with the living, especially through a person, a medium, particularly susceptible to their influence. All right, that's, that's thinking that the dead people can communicate or appear or be here, which is also, remember, it's, it's condemned by God in the Bible. That's not what we're after here. We're not doing a seance. We want God to come, and so we're doing a seance. No, we're not doing that. We want God to come, lift your hands up and start worshiping and say, God, and start loving him with all of your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Sing out to him and let him know you're just amazed at how good he is to us. We're not conjuring up something. We're allowing God to move on us. Move on us, change us. Number seven, when God shows up, he shows off. He's overwhelming. When God shows up, he is overwhelming in a good way, not so overwhelming. I, I'm saying that you, he shows up and you're going, I feel overwhelmed. Number eight, sin undermines the experience of God's presence. If we're going to walk in sin, God's going, what do, you, what do you want me to show up for? You're walking away from me. You're not even doing what I'm asking you to do. I'm going to help you do all that. I'm going to, I'm going to empower you. I'm, I'm here for you. But you keep walking away from me. I, I don't think he's going to say, hey, I want to show up there. Now, I will say this, though. When God does show up, he exposes sin. And the easiest thing to do is go, Forgive me, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And he'll wipe us clean. It's amazing. Number nine, the Bible makes clear that the presence of God is the central goal in God's redemption. God wants relationship with you. God wants relationship with you. That's his goal, is relationship. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit so he could live inside of us. We could have relationship. That's why he has this thing called heaven when we die, where we're going to have relationship with him. Not just a manifested presence, but it will be a theophany. We're going to see him. Number ten, heaven is the continual presence of God. 
our final, our final glory. So I, I want to kind of try to illustrate this. Is Carter here? Carter? I heard Carter. College student. Carter, come on up here. Can you come up here for me for a second? And, and, and uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, can you come on up here? Carter, I don't think we've met. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. I just drew that name out of a hat right there. Just, How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. No, God, God's doing good things inside of Carter right now. He's moving on him. God's been moving on Carter, and it's been really, really exciting um, as God is doing some great things inside of him as he's continuing to move him forward like he does on all of us. Well, Carter, I want you to um, come on up here. Can you help me preach this message? <laughs> you know, the Bible, the, Bible, the Bible says we're to be instant in season and out. So I'm in season, you're out, so let's go. Come on over here. All right, why don't you read this right here? Give him the, the verse. Psalms 34 8. Can I get a, can he hear me? Psalms 34 8. Hold just a second. He's going to grab, give me that thing right there. Psalms 34 8. What does it say? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Yeah. Now just go solo. Let them know what it means. Tell them what it means. Just, just go. Just. It's true. You can't go wrong. It's with true. Them. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. All right, my man. Tell them what the word "taste" means. It's the Hebrew word. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> ta'am. Ta'am. It's like not like Pastor Ta'am, but it's Ta'am. Ta'am. And it means taste. To perceive. To perceive. Ooh. Ooh. So you dig de deeper into the word and you go, it means to, pre what is it? It might mean. Become aware of God and what he can do. I have no belt. So. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a belt that can give us real quick? I don't, I think you're the wrong size. Thank you. Put that on. Let me see it. Just put that around here. Okay. I, 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 I'm wrong. You are too small of a man. I'm a 38. So. He's a 38. Well, I am. You can have mine, but mine would go down. Yeah. We're good. All right. Here, I'll hold on one side. You hold on the other. All right. Be aware of God and what he can do. What is the good, what is the word good? What is it, how do you say it? Tobe, or what is that? To, yeah. Tobe. Yeah, you're the guy telling me. It, say, Tobe. 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 It's what? Same Hebrew word God used at creation when he created the world. Whoa! When God, <laughs> when God created the world and it got done and he made all the falls and the, and the mountain lakes that you all love and, and, and just everything that he made, all the things out in nature, when he got all done, he said, Woo, it's Tobe. <laughs> it's Tobe. It's Tobe. And he says, Hear, O taste and see that the Lord is. Say it in Greek. You know it. Or in he oh, Hebrew. Excuse me. This is Hebrew. Just that? Yeah. O taste and see that the Lord is. Tobe. Tobe. He's good. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. You see, God is so good. When we perceive him, we understand how good he is. You see, God adds goodness to everything in your life once you understand him. He's going to add goodness to everything. All things work together for Tob. All things. He's going to show you his goodness. Over here, we got Mrs. Fitzgerald. How are you doing? I'm great. And what are you making here? I'm making fit mitts. You're making fit. Oh, she needs a microphone too. Here, give that to her. <laughs> She's making fit mitts, okay? Here's Czech cereal. All right. Oh, here, it's right here, right in this bowl, okay? 
That tastes like cardboard. <laughs> Try that. It's not good by itself. It's not good. Oh, you didn't get enough. Here, put uh, some. I got plenty. You got plenty? <laughs> it's like cardboard, isn't it? It's like, it's like chewing cardboard, right? Yeah, it's not that My good. My gosh, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't like it. But you see, if we add a certain secret sauce, ooh, we can take, what's that? By the way, some people want to know what's in the sauce. It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> That's why it's a secret sauce. Okay, Carter? This is secret sauce. And what is this? Cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> when we take cardboard, throw it in there, and a couple of other things she's got in there, and then this has been simmering. Warmed up, simmering. She's got it going here. Is it ready? Not quite yet. Oh, it's not quite yet. <laughs> All right, ad lib, dude. Let it go. Come on, <laughs> preach it. Preach it. This is the first step in, in, in preaching lessons. I don't it's pretty. Steal the thunder. You don't want to steal the thunder. <laughs> He's good. He's good. I like that. I like that. So we're tagging. Now it's back to me, right? <clears throat> All right. How, how much longer do we need? It, ha it's, it has about three more minutes. Oh, three more minutes. But we could just chance it. No, no just keep it going. Three more minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. What do you think we ought to do? This is kind of my first rodeo. <laughs> yeah. But not your last. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think God's doing something. I think, I think he's getting you used to up here, see? Getting you used to be in front of people so you can speak. Bad. It's not that bad, right? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. <laughs> it's like, why do I? You know, it's like anybody could do this, right? <laughs> anyway, God wants us to know how good he is. He sweetens us up. The amazing thing about what she's going to make here, is it boiling now? Yep. How long does it have to boil for? Has two minutes left. Two minutes left. Okay, is this is this part of your stuff? That's, all, that's already made. This is already made. You know what it does? It, it makes things stick together. When we add the secret sauce, it kind of gets sticky and it and it and it, and it attracts things. Yeah, and my question is: Are you a sticky Christian? The, the presence of God will make you sticky. What'll happen is you'll walk around and you'll just. You'll, you'll start talking to people, and they'll just start sticking to you because they like what you're saying. Remember that Jesus, Jesus was sticky. Everything he said, people came to. They, 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 they looked at him. They loved him. Even when he said hard things, he spoke the truth in love, but he was sticky. And what that did is it caused people to want to be attracted to him. Are we attractive as Christians? Are we speaking words that are positive, optimistic? Enlightening, caring, loving. And as we do, we become sticky. You see, his presence, we been ready yet? Okay, here we go. What happens now is we got all of this cardboard in here with some other stuff. Do I need to do that? Oh, here, get over here. You're the guy. You can stir it. Stir it. Oh, set it down there. Set it down there. All right. Stir it, 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 stir it. All right, start in there, start in there. Ooh, look at the, look at the gooiness, look at the stickiness, look at the, ooh, the special sauce. Look, keep going, keep going. Stir it in there, stir it in there, stir it in there, stir it in there, stir it in there. Keep the cardboard intact. Keep the cardboard intact. Yes, he said. All right, all right. Then when we get all done. We get this package. Hey, take a can he he probably that's probably too hot, right? Yeah, this is gonna taste better. Try that. Try some of that. Does it taste better than cardboard? Get a bigger piece. Yeah, take the whole thing. Take it a whole thing. Put throw it in there. How's that? It's a lot Good? It's a lot better. Mm. You're trying to watch your carbs? It just doesn't have any because God's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and grab one. Go ahead. Give Carter a hand. Give him a hand. Grab one. Take it to your seat. Thank you. Love you, man.
Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. Is there a new family here? Do we have a new family here? Is there anybody here with your kids? Anybody here with your kids? Where? Where, 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 where? Huh? Way in the back. Run to me. Can you run to me? All right. So you're here with your kids. New person. I need a new person. Is this your first time here? No. Oh, okay. But you're somewhat, somewhat new. All right. Well, thank you for being here. What's your name? Cassandra. All right, Cassandra. God bless you. Anybody else? New here. New family. New family. New family. Who is that back there? Do you have kids here? There we go. Something back there. All right. Who we got here? Who we got? Anybody with their family brought their kids here? Looking, 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 looking. Oh, we'll give you one. Who else? Who else? All right. Back there, somebody. All right. Good, 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 good. Give everybody a hand. You see, the presence of God takes plain and ordinary and makes it extraordinary. It makes it extraordinary. The extra is the presence of God. If I could do anything today as we embark on this journey, would to, would to put inside of you a desire for God and his presence, for God to move, for God to move, for God to move, for God to move. You know, it's so interesting. I love the presence so much that when Carrie and I got married, I had one request. I think it was that. I wanted a saxophone at our wedding, right? Those are the two things I got. Everything else was, I don't care. I came walking into the song that says, here we are in your presence, lifting holy hands to you. Here we are in your presence, giving thanks for all that you brought us through. You know, I started my marriage that way. And it's been a thing that I've wanted all my life, is the presence of God. Nothing else matters. This church doesn't matter if we're just a club, if we're just a bunch of people doing things here and there. If God isn't at the center, if God isn't moving, if God's presence isn't here, then we're just a civic organization. I want to be a living organism of the living God. I want his presence to show up. Oh, God. So I've got seven minutes to finish. God's presence, the presence of God brings joy. We got to Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. What is the path of life? What is this path of life that he's talking about? You know that there's two paths. There's two paths. The Bible talks about two paths. There's, there's, there's all sorts of other things on that path. There's all sorts of good things and there's all sorts of bad things. There's a good path and there's a bad path. There's a good path and a bad path. I was on a bad path for a long time and God says, hey, you really want to go there? And somehow he miraculously saved me and set me on a good path. But there are two paths. And Matthew 7 says, Jesus is speaking about it. He says, enter by the, number one, the narrow gate. The narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. It's the enemy's number one trick right here. God says, hey, I got a narrow gate to you go through. It will restrict you. You feel a little restriction as you go through that gate. There is, there's some restriction you have to go through, but you get on the other side, it says there's fullness of joy. But this other one, it's just wide. It's just open. It's, it's kind of like 
Weeds, weeds grow everywhere. You don't have to do anything to get them. They're, they're, this wide open gate is just easy. It doesn't take any effort to find it. You don't have to look for it. It will find you. It literally will find you, and it will lead to destruction. The word destruction, apalia, it means ruin or loss, physical, spiritual, or eternal loss. I'm looking at the people that lost everything in their fire, but there's something worse than that fire. There is a fire that will, you will burn in forever and ever. It's called hell, and God does not want anyone to go there. It will be an eternal loss forever. The word here in the lexicon means to destroy or cause the destruction of persons, objects, or institutions. Why the devil is destroying long-standing institutions today. Marriage, the family, government, schools. The devil's having a heyday. We need Christians out there standing strong and sharing the good news. And there are many who go by it. Why are there many that go on this path? Because it's easy to find. It's easy to find. The devil's going right this way. Opens it up, right this way. Look how big it is, how wonderful. Right this way. But, he, but it's, it's wrong this way. It, this is, it, it's right that way. That way, but it's restrictive. It's hard. It's, it's a little more difficult. But this is the right way. But this one's easy, but it's the wrong way. And Jesus warns us, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Because narrow, restricted is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. Zoe, life. And there are a few that find it, and our job, our job as people that love Jesus is to help people find it. We help 10 people find it. We helped them. Our job is to help people find it, find it. They don't get it. They just see the big open gate. They see all of that. They see all the fun and don't understand that there's a, a catastrophe and destruction at the end. Over here, it seems restrictive, but there is fullness of, jo of joy. Narrow, 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 narrow. I started thinking that we think about how broad and how open it is to go away from the Lord. I was talking to a person, a friend who was in jail. And while they were in jail, they were in jail, and while they were in jail, someone woke this person up and said, hey, they're in jail. And said, hey, there's three or four other people in the cell. Hey, you want to do a line of coke with us? In jail. I'm going, while in jail for doing something illegal, they're doing something illegal. It's easy to find bad, even in a place where they forbid it, even in a place where it's hard to do, but it's just easy, wide, wide and broad, wide. There's two paths, two paths, one that leads to destruction, one that leads to life, zoe, life, eternal life, the life that God gives, salvation, and in it, there's fullness of joy. You see, what is the path of life? It's the it's the path that Jesus shows us. And I'll guarantee you this, if you go down that path, even though it's restrictive, you're gonna log memories. You're gonna start logging memories and realize, wow, look what God did. Look what God did. Look what God did. I have so many things that God did for me that I didn't deserve. God did for me. And I have all these memories of what God did. Here's what he did, here's what he did, here's what he did. When I was walking down this road, at the start, I was a bad person and I was walking down this road and I still have memories here of everything that was awful. And Oh my God, why did I do that? I feel ashamed of what I did. They'll both produce memories. 
Those seem easy at the start, but they'll produce a memory that you will hate at the end. But this one produces memories you go, wow, look what God did. Look what God did. Look what God did. Look what God did in my life. He changed me. He set me free. And there's fullness of joy. The word fullness is a Greek word that means, am I in Greek? Yep. Soba. It means, it means to sate, to fill to satisfaction. To fill to satisfaction. The word sate, <clears throat> sate, this word fullness, it means satisfy or desire or an appetite to the full. Supply someone with as much as or more of something than is desired or can be managed. God wants to give you more joy than you could possibly manage. Going down that path that's restrictive. He wants to give you more joy than you could possibly manage. I always thought God wanted to take my fun away. But he wanted to give me more fun but I had to give him my life and I had to give it all to him, all of my life. It took a little bit of a process, but finally he got it all. Every once in a while something pops out and I'm going up. But God is so good. Want more joy? invite God's presence. He's a party waiting to happen. Lord, help us. <sighs> we want your presence, Lord. We want you to move in our lives. We want you to change us, transform us, empower us. We ask you, Lord, let your presence come and fill us to overflowing with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want you to know, guys, I'm in this adventure and walk with you. Always know I never preach at anybody because I'm preaching at me. I want more of him. I want more of Jesus. I want more memories of how good, good God is. I love you guys. God bless you.